Chu Kuang Hua was a master Gu Qin player, and he was the leader of the Zhejiang style. He lived on a small lane in the city of Hangzhou. Sadly, he recently passed away from old age. In his 90 years, he played the Gu Qin for 86 of them. In China, there are less than 100 people who have played the Gu Qin for this long. This is his Gu Qin, the instrument that he played throughout his life. Looking at it, we can almost feel his fine, heavenly music tickling our ears. The Gu Qin is sometimes referred to by its description, the plucked seven-stringed Chinese musical instrument. It is already over 3,000 years old, and it's one of the oldest plucked musical instruments in the world. The oldest Gu Qin ever found in China was unearthed in the tomb of Marquis Yi of Zhang in Hubei province. It was made during the Warring States period some 2,400 years ago. The Book of Documents is China's oldest collection of essays. One of the essays is about how Xuan, a ruler in distant antiquity, played the Gu Qin. The account reads as follows. Xuan played a five-stringed instrument and chanted a poem from the south. Peace reigned in his territory. Playing music was associated with power, so it can easily be imagined the high status that this instrument enjoyed throughout ancient China. There were more examples. Playing the Guqin was representative of traditional artistic skills. It came well before chess playing, calligraphy and painting. Hangzhou is at its best when viewed in mist through a window where everything takes on a poetic mystical tone. Such a view is called a scene through a veil. Over the past 60 years, the Westlake Guqin Society founded by Xu Yuanbai, a leading figure of the new school of playing, has been located right by the lake.
The current chairman of the Westlake Guqin Society is Xu Yuanbai's grandson, Xu Junyi. His father was the famous Guqin player, Xu Guanghua, we mentioned at the beginning of this program. From time to time, Xu Junyi plays for his ancestors as a way to pay tribute to them. Early Guqin were made in the shape of the phoenix in pursuit of peace and auspiciousness. The most unique thing about this musical instrument is its sound box. It's not made of wooden boards, but out of a hollowed piece of wood. Its wall is thick and it's only polished coarsely so as to produce a long drawn out tone. The sound box is round on top but flat at the bottom. This agrees with the traditional belief that heaven is round while the earth is square. Each Guqin has 13 emblems on it standing for the 12 months of the year plus a leap month. The strings rest upon hardwood pieces. These pieces are called the mountain. On the bottom are two round slots, the large one called a dragon pool and the small one called a phoenix pond. The Guqin therefore has a mount, a pool, a dragon and a phoenix. It thus stands for everything under heaven. The Guqin has become a living creature. It has a spiritual nature. In pre-Qin dynasty society over 2,000 years ago, playing the Guqin was a symbol of social status for the literati and officialdom. Apart from occasions such as ceremonial worship, Guqin playing was seldom done in public. It might have been played for a gathering of the people for entertainment, however. Confucius, the sage of all sages, 
greatly loved Gurdjieff music. In fact, Confucius developed a theory for learning how to play the Gurdjieff. To Confucius, it was far from enough to learn the skills. There was something else one had to master. Just met an ancient figure. His contemporary Bo Ya also found a close friend in this way. As a famous Guqin player, Bo Ya often felt lonely because nobody could understand his music. One day, however, Bo Ya met a woodcutter who could distinguish its music, whether it was about the towering Mount Tai or a vast ocean. The two became deep friends. Unfortunately, the woodcutter Zhi died young. Bo Ya was devastated by his death. Filled with grief, after playing high mountains and flowing water for the last time, Bo Ya smashed his treasured guqin. He was done with it. Boya has long since returned to the soil, but the two pieces he played before he smashed his guqin have been passed down to new generations of players.
After the year 206 BC, when the Qing dynasty collapsed, Wu Qing playing was no longer restricted to the privileged. It entered the lives of ordinary people. Over the 700 years that ensued, Wu Qing playing underwent a significant change in form. It became a musical instrument for solo performance. Over this period, many famous melodies were composed. Despite the broadening of the instrument's appeal, Gucci music was still favored by scholars. To scholars, Gucci playing was a fundamental part of self-cultivation. But why was this? It was because of the unique tone of the instrument. The Gucci is not big and loud. In fact, its music is only audible within a very small area. For this reason, playing the Guqin is rather like talking with a close friend. It takes a quiet place with very agreeable surroundings to engage in the conversation. In ancient times, people played the Guqin on mountains, by a brook, or within a bamboo grove. Today, Xu Junyu uses his backyard as a venue. Playing the Guqin is like pouring out one's heart to an intimate friend. It is also like a subtle murmuring between the player and the instrument. The player is rewarded with a sense of satisfaction. The three most popular tones in Guqin playing are scattered tones, floating tones, and stopped tones. The player's left hand moves to make the lingering tone change in pitch. This skill, only seen in Guqin playing, is called sliding tones. Using this skill, the lingering tone will become weaker and weaker until it fades out. The player's thinking follows the lingering note to travel up, down or waver in a fascinating world of the imagination. Even after the music has died out, the mind still lingers on what it has heard. This is referred to as the implication continues even after the music ends. This was precisely what traditional scholars were in pursuit of, a highly enjoyable artistic experience through a melody full of changes. Intellectual emotions were awakened to conquer material concerns or to usher the player and audience together into a higher realm. It's said that every piece of music is for somebody. So there's the music of Boya, 
And there's the music of Zichi. If playing the guqin is a communication going on between the player and the instrument, then listening to the guqin is that between the player and the listener. Apart from conveying the performer's inner feelings of pain, joy, grief, anger, loneliness, or sadness, Guqin music may even work of the Western Han Dynasty. The Guqin caused love to arise between famous scholar Sima Xiangru and a very pretty, highly literate girl from a wealthy family named Zhuo Wenjun. Their relationship was credited to Guqin music when Zhuo Wenjun understood the love Sima Xiangru expressed in his music, even before they had been properly introduced. She was touched, and nothing could stand in her way. The two eventually married, creating a story that later generations enjoyed telling time and again. This was not the first time that love was won through Guqin playing. A line in China's oldest poetry book, The Book of Songs, goes like this: "Playing the Guqin to amuse my fair lady." Historically, the Guqin is often mentioned with another traditional musical instrument, the si. Together, they represent the love of young people. From the story of the romance between Sima Xiangru and Zhuo Wenjun, later generations composed, "The Phoenix Seeks His Mate." Before the Sui and Tang dynasties, Guqin playing was taught orally. The problem with this was that if any words were forgotten, a musical piece might be different from its original or even lost altogether. Around the ninth or tenth century, primitive musical notation for the guqin appeared, and with this, ancient music entered a new chapter. One can never underestimate the significance the scores had in the spread of Guqin music. These ancient notations employed written Chinese characters. They were complicated and difficult to memorize. In the late Tang Dynasty. A man named Tao Ro improved these notations by reducing the number of strokes in each character. The notation he invented was an early form of what was called reduced notation, a notation system that appeared later. Today, of course, most musicians use modern musical notation. Apart from very established masters in the traditional Chinese style, few can read the reduced character notations. Most of the notations of ancient music come from the Min and Qing publications. These eras. Were a time of an influx of Western ideas. Printing technology progressed rapidly, and this made musical notation printing easier than.
The Zhejiang School was founded by Xu Jianyue's grandfather, Xu Yuanbai. One day in the 1930s, Xu Yuanbai scaled Mount Hua. In front of an endless pine forest and numerous looking strange rocks, he took out the guqin he had brought with him and played a classical piece called High Mountains and Flowing Water. As if this was not enough, he carved an inscription on a rock. It read, Xu Xuanbai from Eastern Zhejiang played the guqin in this spot. The Zhejiang style emphasizes a delicate treatment of notes. It is a style able to bring out classical beauty, one capable of tonal changes. High Mountains and Flowing Water was Xu Yuanbai's favorite masterpiece. Today, as the grandson of Xu Yuanbai, Xu Junyu often meets with other players to compare notes. People in China are often overwhelmed by the superb skills of these master players. They're also overwhelmed by the heavenly music they conjure from their instruments. This ancient form of music is already several thousand years old.